My name is Sister Anna Hangalova. I belong to the congregation of the religious sisters of the Holy Spirit. At the moment, I'm working in our formation house, the posturance, where I'm accompanying five young women who would like to join the congregation. Uh, I am one of the sisters who is at the almost the beginning of the congregation. Let me say in the fourth set of the sisters who joined the congregation. And uh, I would like to share what I remember about our founder, Bishop James Cowboy. There are many things I remember, <clears throat> more especially the concern he had for us religious in the diocese, whether religious brothers, priests, sisters. He was always concerned that we move with the church. He used to say, like a person, the church grows. It grows in its understanding. And I don't want you to be left behind. So from time to time, he would hold the talks at the St. Kizito Pastoral Center, where he would share with us the mind of the church and where the church is so that we are not left behind. And I used to enjoy those meetings. And all the religious of the diocese would come to those meetings at St. Kizito's. And coming back from those meetings, I would feel, now I understand something about the church. Then on a simple level, he would say, be brother, be sister to each other. For example, if you are passing through Monze, feel free to come to the house and take a cup of tea. And you know, over a cup of tea, you can share a lot of significant things. But if you just drive along the road, you don't greet the others, then you are strangers to each other. And because of that, you could find that if Sisters, uh, we are traveling from Choma to Rusaka. They would stop in Pemba to have a cup of tea with the sisters in Pemba. They would stop in Monze, just like that. And we enjoyed it. And some of us from Chikuni, we could even drive to Fumbo Mission to go and have a cup of tea there. It sounds funny, but Looking at what he said, it made sense. Over a cup of tea, we would chat about, you know, our work that we were doing in the church, the challenges we were meeting, and as they say, a problem uh, shared is half, is, a, a, is half solved. We supported each other through that sharing. And also, he was a very simple man. Simple in the sense that uh, every day when he knocked off, if you were looking for him, you found him in the garden. Now, if you ask me which bishop would be growing cabbages for the community, but that's what he did every day of his life, unless he was away or he was unwell, he would be in the garden growing vegetables for the community. Then another thing I remember him saying was, do not complain so much about each other. For example, in the community, one is in charge of cleaning the bathroom, the other one is in charge of the garden. The one in the garden might be uh, coming with a bit of mud <laughs> when he saws of his shoes and leaves some dirt in the bathroom while cleaning uh, the hands to go and pray uh, the evening prayer together. Don't you complain so much because that person is doing what you yourself is not doing. And that has remained with me so much that whenever I catch myself wanting to complain about another sister, I would pause and say, Bishop Kobo used to say, yes, 
you can challenge each other. But don't complain too much about the other sister. Because that sister is doing something which you yourself is not doing. And also, uh, he used to say, if you are running an institution like uh, St. Joseph Secondary School, uh, Monza Mission Hospital, Mazaboka Girls, whichever institution you are in, make sure that you recognize the people who make that institution be what it is. When you are coming for work, recognize the watchman at the gate. And as you enter your working place, recognize those who are sweeping. Recognize the, the, the person who looks after the flowers, the lawn. In short, recognize everybody because that institution is functioning because of the different contributions that uh, people are making. Whereas if you just pass by as if you don't see the man at the gate, as if you haven't seen the sweeper, as if you haven't seen the, the person at the desk, if you just pass by like that aloof, those people are going to lose interest in what they are doing. And as a result, the standards would fall. And then he would say, when things are hard, think of Mary, our mother, the mother of the church. It was not easy for her to see her son be mistreated, to see her son working, you know, long hours. And sometimes people would complain about him. It was not easy for her. But she kept pondering these things in her heart until she could find meaning, realizing that this, this son of mine came for a mission. And of course, in her pondering over these things, she would be praying for him. There are so many things that our founder said. I can't list them all. But he was a simple and a humble man. When I'm remembering him and the, the presence that he was in the diocese, I would like to thank God for his life and encourage us to be people who read the signs of the times. I didn't mention that point. So he was a man of insight into the future reading the signs of the times. So I would encourage each one of us, whatever apostolate we are involved as a congregation, our life together as sisters in our communities, let us be people who read the signs of the times so that we'll be able to, to, to be aware that this is what is needed at this time.